Welcome to another serving of Swipe. Here's what we'll be bringing you in the next 10 minutes or so. Angela looks at the technology being trialled to help support people living with dementia. I find out whether Microsoft's most powerful games console really is the one. And Simon's feeling the need for speed in our games review. I've come to Microsoft in London this week to get a look at the company's newest offering, one that everyone has been talking about. It's coming up a little bit later on. First, though, let's get a quick look at the tech stories that have been making headlines this week. Facebook's launched a person-to-person -person payment service in the UK, allowing users to instantly send money back and forth on their mobile phones or computers. Messenger is due to roll out its new payment function over the coming weeks. Twitter's trial of doubling its character limit to 280 is being expanded to most countries. The increased word space won't be rolled out to those who communicate in Chinese, Japanese or Korean, though. Those languages are able to convey more in an individual character. English Heritage has teamed up with Google Street View to showcase historic sites online for the first time. The technology will allow 360-degree views of some of England's most famous sites. And here's a new way to explore the Great Pyramid of Giza without even going to Egypt. A team that recently discovered an unknown void inside the ancient landmark using imaging technology has set up a virtual reality research lab in Paris, letting people have a go at walking around inside the pyramid. Now a project's underway to see how Internet of Things technology can help increase support for people with dementia. Angela's been to meet some of those involved to find out more. Right, here we go. John Edwards was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in June 2015. A former airline training pilot, he suffers with mild to moderate dementia. John and his wife Marion volunteered to test some new technology, which could help make life easier for them by connecting them remotely to support. Since becoming part of the study earlier this year, the couple have been using a variety of devices, such as sensors and trackers using the so-called Internet of Things. They are placed around their home or worn so that NHS clinicians can monitor John's health and safety from elsewhere. It's really great because you can then go out safely. I mean, John will say, I, I go out to my choir practice <laughs> knowing that uh, I can leave him and he'll be monitored 24-7, which is really good. So yes, we're very lucky really because it's, it's as though you've got a doctor's... Um, uh, surgery here. Surgery. Yes. All, all for yourself. Yes. And they're monitoring you all the time and anything goes wrong, you, you can just pick up the phone and you get it um, all Scheduled. explained and everything else mm. that we need. So it's, it's very good. The technology analyses the physical data entries recorded by the couple each day and keeps track of certain things like blood pressure, hydration and temperature. The sensors and devices feed back information in real time so that monitoring staff can see whether someone has wandered too far from home, had a fall or is becoming unwell. The doctor overseeing the scheme is pleased with the early indications. We know that the data that we've collected has been really important in making decisions about healthcare interventions. If something goes wrong, the machine's already learning a lot about people's normal patterns of behaviour, so clearly picks up when things start to deviate. When that happens, we get an alert that's flagged at our monitoring centre, and that alert is both a visual alert and an auditory alert, so it tells us to pay attention that something's happening here. The study, being led by Surrey and Borders NHS Trust and funded by the Department of Health, comes to a close in March 2018. It's hoped the new way of delivering care for people with long-term and complex health conditions will eventually be rolled out nationally and for the opportunity to use the technology applied more broadly. Don't, don't hold on to the railing. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Measurement finished. Thank you. Time now to talk about this. If you've never heard of an Xbox One X, in fact, if you've never played a video game, don't switch over. Here's what you need to know. The Xbox One X is the latest games console made by Microsoft, which has been bringing out various updates of the Xbox since 2001. The company's got a famous rivalry with Sony's PlayStation consoles. The two go back a long way. If you've ever heard of the console wars, people are usually referring to them. And Sony has recently been winning that war. 
For this week, Microsoft launched its brand new offering, the Xbox One X, promising to be the world's most powerful gaming console. It's got six teraflops of power. So my first question for the UK and Ireland boss was, obviously, what does six teraflops mean? A teraflop is really simply a way of measuring speed in a computer. And the fact that we have six of them means that we're 40% more powerful than the next most powerful console on the market. So it's one of the ways that we measure it as the world's most powerful console. Now for the bit where I bring in a gaming expert to tell us what he thinks of the new console. Meet Tommy T999, showing me how to speed around the track at Silverstone. You just pushed me into the wall. I did, I did. People seem to like hearing what Tommy thinks. His YouTube channel's been watched over 100 million times. So what does he make of the world's most powerful console? Very, very impressed. The, the games that are there, so if you look at something like Forza, for instance, from a driving game perspective, the 4K quality that you're now getting if you've got that right 4K Ultra HD TV is really making sure that everything pops out of you. Harvey tells me in four years' time, it's expected half of TV households will have a 4K screen at home. But if you're not joining the 4K explosion, why would you buy the new premium console? There's this technique, actually, that we call super sampling. Uh, and super sampling, essentially what that's doing is it's taking a superior resolution of image in ultra uh, 4K and it's shrinking it down for the HD screen. Even if you have a standard HD screen, you're still going to see improvements. Every bit of enhancement counts in the console wars. The company's competing with Sony's PS4 Pro, remember? They're basically doing it to try and regain some ground and regain ground with a certain segment of the audience who are very core gamers. One final bit of essential information about the new Xbox One X is that it's not cheap. It's £449. I'm sure that'll help you decide whether or not to buy it. So now that you're clued up on consoles, let's talk about games. Simon is in the studio this week, and if you're going to get an Xbox One X, he's got some titles you can play on that too. Need for Speed Payback for the PS4, PC, Xbox One and Xbox One X is the latest iteration in the Need for Speed franchise. I'm going to tell you this, it's wonderful to have it back because for some reason in the video game industry as of late, a lot of developers and a lot of publishers have been focusing on the simulation racer and that's fine. There is something cool about getting behind the wheel of an in-game Porsche and it feeling like a real Porsche. However, that's not as fun as an arcade racer where you sit behind a super-powered mega car and you just go really fast and you take corners at breathneck speeds. Need for Speed Payback takes this idea even further and it does put you in an open world environment and the whole time it just keeps saying, hey, why don't you go faster? Hey, why don't you go faster? And that is why it's really fun. You're essentially in an action movie, you're the stunt driver and I'm sure if EA had the license, they would have just called this the Fast and Furious the game because that's what it's all about. If you've been wanting for an arcade racer that's just fun, entertaining and exhilarating, Need for Speed Payback is it. Probably go and get it. Okay, boys, let's even the odds. Super Lucky's Tale for the PC, Xbox One, and the Xbox One X is the sequel to Lucky's Tale that came out a few years ago, and it is one of the most laid back, relaxing platformers you could ever hope to play. It kind of feels like one of those games that would have come out in the late 90s for the Nintendo 64, but there's nothing wrong with that because if you're looking for a nostalgic treat, Super Lucky's Tale is exactly this. And it's just a very relaxing game that you should really play with your family or play with your kids. If you're having a lazy Sunday and you just want to chill out and relax, you should play Super Lucky's Tale. It's never going to challenge you, but it is going to relax you and make you feel pretty good. So yeah, Super Lucky's Tale isn't really going to push your brain in any significant way, but sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you do just want a kind of nothing experience that when you're done, you think, huh, that was nice. That's exactly what Super Lucky's Tale is. Fire Emblem Warriors for the Nintendo Switch takes the Fire Emblem series, then it takes the Dynasty Warrior series, it pushes them together, and this creation is what comes out the other side. And you'll be pleased to know, well, it's really entertaining. 
Given the two franchises that it is based on, that doesn't mean you're going to be hacking and slashing literally hundreds of enemies that are on screen. But the cool thing here is the role-playing elements from Fire Emblem have also been added into the mix. So while you do get to go around with a big sword and just attack things, you can also level up your characters and there's a cool story to make sure it keeps progressing over nicely. So really, this does do exactly what it says on the tin. It takes Fire Emblem, it takes Dynasty Warriors, it makes both franchises work, and the result is a very good video game that you can get now on your Nintendo Switch. Thank you for watching. As always, I'll be back with more Swipe next week. And in the meantime, follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe. Bye bye.